before we left, we were talking about keys of victory. Um, Kenny KG was talking about you know getting Jared Goff throwing the ball, mm-hmm. opening things up. How you feel about that, Spinny? Um, I would rather run the ball personally. <laughs> I would rather run the ball against it, yeah. the San Francisco defense, although their secondary is not great. It's not great. They got a couple pieces out there. Traverius Ward is a great player. Obviously, they're without Hufanga, who is their who's their stud out there. But I just think that uh, you need to run the ball to soften that pressure that mm-hmm. they're going to put on with the defensive line. You need to run the ball to uh, to go out there and and get your offense going. Like that's what you have to do to get your offense going. You have to run the ball. This team is based off of running the ball. This team is ready to go out there and take care of business. So we need to do that. And running the ball is imperative. So get behind that offensive line. Even without Jonah Jackson, it's still a great offensive line. It's still a great unit, a unit that you should be able to use to make some things happen. So I'm excited to see what's going on there. Yeah, I think more specifically, too, when you're talking about like running the ball, because of Jonah Jackson like missing, I don't want Drake Kinlaw or, or, or Fred Warner to be able to like blitz that. Uh, where we end up starting that guard this week, I want to bounce it outside. And watching the game back, the Packers versus the 49ers, I felt like that's when Aaron Jones was most successful. And it makes sense too, right? Like if, if you want your best blocker to have an opportunity to, to block a Fred Warner, you want to bounce it to the right side where Penny Sewell can go out there in space and find the Fred Warner and, and, and get rid of him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus having to deal with an experienced guard at that position while you're running up the middle. So yeah, I, I like that. Uh, ideology too like just open it up through the run game I think that's like what yeah. we've been obviously last week was a little bit different but as like everybody knows Todd Bowles is a blitz happy like defense that's what they do and, and they mentioned it in the press conference afterward they, they had to throw the ball to open up the run game which is like a foreign concept for us because you said typically like we're used yeah. to running the damn yeah. ball but I think we have like the Joes to get it done in terms of like the offensive line even with uh, Jordan Jackson out but the two running backs too Dave Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs to open those things up for Jared Goff uh, I agree you run the ball and again, roadmaps to victory, much like Dan Campbell had his, his presser today, or not his presser, but his, his interview on the, on the radio, all three phases of the game. Watching that game back, one of the big momentum swings for the Packers was that kick return by Nixon. Mm-hmm. And he was also they are also doing well with the punt returns too. Now, I don't know what the situation is with Cleve Raymond, but it would be really, really helpful if he was healthy because yeah. he's pretty good mm-hmm. at, in the return game. And it's very kind of foreign t- you know, territory to sit up here and talk about it, but like it's, he's nice like that. I think he was a pro bowler, after, or all pro, I should say. Was it last year yep. with Khalif Raymond? So I, I think definitely capital because it's a stingy, stingy defense, right? So if you have an opportunity like that to gain some yards and put your offense in good good field position you got to do on the return yeah, game to win a game against an elite team like the 49ers you got to win all three phases and special teams is one of those phases so it'll definitely help if Khalif Raymond is back if he is out there because he gives you that extra oomph that extra 20 30 yards when you're starting a drive against a great defense like this so hopefully Khalif will be ready to go hopefully he'll be out there suited up I don't know the extent of his injury we might have to talk to Broder on that one but I, I expect this Lions team to be ready and offensively we'll see what they do but this 49ers team is a team that can get pressure without blitzing. Yeah. They can get yeah. pressure by rushing four. With those elite ends in Chase Young and Nick Bosa, with the great guys they have up the middle in Kinlaw and Hargrave, they can get pressure on the quarterback by rushing four guys. So you're going to need to mix it up. Like mm-hmm. dropping back and letting Jared go up, throw, 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 might not be the best move because they can put all those guys in coverage because they can, they can bunch up out there, especially in the middle of the field where they have great linebackers, I, I'd rather see them open it up with the run game for sure. Yeah, I think just to, like, make it a heavy box so Jared Goff has, like, friendly situations to throw into. But I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with you, KG. Like, I, obviously, I think we're going to pass the ball. Like, it's yeah. it's going to be a feature in our game. But I think where we're most deadly is when teams have to be aware of their run and, and they're falling for those play action, you know, yeah. fakes and open up situations for Amon Ra and uh, Sam Laporta. Right. The, re- the reason why I say a run more is only because their front seven is very good. And if yeah. you have to pick a position group to attack, it would have to be the secondary. But I totally agree. If we can, they're going to game plan for the run, but if we can't get that run going with Gibbs and Montgomery, despite Jonah Jackson being out, that's definitely the way to go because that's our strength. Luigi yeah. Gaming makes a good point in the chat. He says, uh, Bosa won't be a problem. Golf is white. <laughs> we know that, that Bosa really gets up when he's playing the black quarterbacks, yeah. but the white guys not so much. So uh, that's, that's a pretty good point. It's a pretty good point. Nah, so I do got it. My bad. I do got no, a question good. for y'all. Do you trust Michael Badgley at this point? Yes. Okay, because there will probably come points in this game where we might get stopped toward the red zone. Do you trust Dan Campbell to, one, be aggressive or send Michael Badgley out there and try and get those points? Dan Campbell's going to be Dan Campbell. 
Dan Campbell is going to be Dan Campbell, and he knows that touchdowns win games and field goals get you beat, especially on the road and especially in the playoffs. Yeah. So if it's ready to go, if it's fourth and three, if it's even a, a chance, he's going to go for it. He's going to be Dan Campbell. He's going to be aggressive. That's what's gotten him this far. That's what gotten him two playoff wins. But he also showed us, like, he'll send Badgley out there. Yeah. He's not afraid to do that. He has faith in Badgley, and now that's even – Enhanced after he made that field goal. Yeah. It was what a fifty six yarder or fifty four. Fifty four yeah. yarder, yeah. And I had faith in him. I had faith in him when they trotted him out there to make that kick. I was like, he's gonna knock this down and he did. So I believe they'll I believe they'll stick to their guns and be the Lions. But he, if it's you know, fourth and eight mm-hmm. from the forty two yard line, he's gonna send Badgley out there to make yeah. the kick. Yeah, I think when it comes like Dan Campbell showing that aggressive traits, I'm all for it. It's just like the extra aggression when it comes like the, the play calling in those situations. Like last week before halftime, third and one, borderline field goal range, and within the two minute mark, we we go we had a passing play, and that's where Kansi sat golf and Frank Ragnar hurt his knee. That was unnecessary. Within yeah. two minutes, we can end the half with a, you know points on the board. Run it in that situation. Yeah, we we have a, a, a tremendous run game. There's no reason why we shouldn't be running it on, on third and short. So I, that's the only piece I I would care to see is like if if it's fourth and one, fourth and two, run the football, mm-hmm. please. Yeah, I got please it. just yeah. run the damn football. But other than that, I'm I'm here for it. And when it comes to badges, like it is what it is type of situation. Like. We got nobody else to kick for us. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're going to have to trust them or at least just like ride with them at this point too. But uh, the number one, number one, number one thing for me, key to victory for the Detroit Lions beating the San Francisco 49ers. And it, it ties into what you said about Brock Purdy too, which is stopping the run with Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. He is he's elite. He is the, the best running back in the league, would you guys say? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Uh, he's the yes. best running back in the league. <laughs> they are 11-1 anytime time he rushed over 75 yards. If you just limit him – they're, by the way, too, the Debo Samuel stuff, I know we're kind of just like riding it and playing it by ear. If he is gone, that's such a huge piece of their yeah. offense that they're missing just because like the, the amount of the intricacies they have with him that's as true. both a rusher and a, and a receiver. And a blocker. And a blocker. It's yep. just extra things you got to look for. I feel like it's almost like a third of their offense is like taken away, yeah. and they're, they're kind of just forced to play just you know, you know, ball up, man up, football. Yeah. And so, if you could limit Christian McCaffrey in those in that situation, then you're then you have Brock Purdy open to make those you know year two mistakes. I mean, they still obviously they have George Kittle and uh, Brandon Ayuk in the passing Absolutely. game still, which yeah. are no slouches. Like those two guys are very good. So you got to worry about them. But Debo is a huge part of their game. Yeah, He's absolutely. a huge part of their game plan. He does a lot for the team. And him being injured or not playing is huge. Yeah, and I agree with you. You got to – I don't want to say take Christian McCaffrey out of the game because that's not going to happen, just how talented he is. Let but you help. can't let him run wild. You can't yeah. let him go out there for 100-plus. You can't let him do anything like that. So you need to force Brock Purdy to beat you. You need to put the ball in Brock Purdy's hands and say you're going to be the one that has to win this game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm with you too. And the thing too, again, like because I, I know Ayuk's a beast. Uh, I know Kittle's a beast. But it's, Debo just it has that extra wrinkle where it's like, okay, where's he at? What's he doing on this play? Is it an end round? Is he rushing? Is it a screenplay? They, they do all that weird, funky stuff with Debo. And if he's not in there, you just you force to play those guys man up. And I'd rather be in that situation than have to deal with Debo on top of it. And even just, if he plays, it's, he's going to be limited, I feel like, because they said he's yeah, experiencing absolutely. a lot of pain, even though he didn't break anything. So, yes. um, yeah, him, like he said, him being injured, is it, that's a big impact on its own. So, we'll definitely see how it goes. I, I feel like, you know, they kind of have to continue with the bend, don't break approach, which may in this case be Brandon Ayuk getting off, but everybody else, you, you got to you know try and tamper a little bit so we'll see 100 percent agreements there mm-hmm. um what are we doing so we're all are we going to break we're going to, to 552 Five, uh 542 yeah. 542 yeah all right bet let's move into another one real quick then so you have another one uh this one I, I'm, I'm only smiling i'm only smirking because i actually don't have an answer for myself yet i thought i did and I started looking at things a little bit deeper and kind of just psyched myself out uh, shout out to kg for this one too or actually i think we just discussed this one in text but who, what quarterback would you rather have in this matchup? Is it Jared Goff or Brock Purdy? Yeah. Spinny, I'll start with you. We got that graphic, Chris. Do you have that I gotta graphic? I bring them back in. because. Okay, Chris it was a, a graphic of a lot of different um, statistics. statistics from Goff and Purdy this season. They're both top five in passing yards. They're both top five in QBR. They're both top five in passing touchdowns on the season. I believe Purdy was third in touchdowns per, uh, 
Goff was fourth. Purdy was fifth in yards. Goff was second. Yeah, here it is. It's from the NFL. They're both ranked top five in passing yards and touchdowns this season. Goff second in yards, fourth in touchdowns. Purdy's fifth in yards and third in touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So they're right around the same. They're right around the, the same level. Purdy's got a little bit of the athleticism on him. He can move around a little more. He seems more confident in the pocket. But Goff has, you know, he's got the, I don't know, he's got the moxie. He's been here before. He's, he's been to a Super he's Bowl He's got that before. California cool. He's got the California cool. He, he is the veteran guy. Like Purdy, yeah, he had one – you know, one great season last year. Mm-hmm. We still don't – the book's not out on him, I would say. You know, yeah, Jared Goff yeah. has been there before. He's a veteran. He knows how to read a defense a little better. And, you know, Brock Purdy had a four-interception game this year. Jared Goff didn't have a four-interception game this year. He had, he had a couple stinkers, yeah. but he didn't have one he had a four, four-turnover game. So, yeah. yeah, he had a four-turnover game, <laughs> but he didn't have a four-interception game. So yeah. It's – it's pretty close when you look at it between these two guys. They're both in fantastic systems. They both have great play callers. They both have great pieces surrounding them. Golf has the better offensive line. San Fran's got the better defense. It's a tough choice. It's really a toss-up. Right now for this game, going into it, I would take Jared Goff, though. I would rather have Jared Goff than Brock Purdy in this moment. Yeah. KG? Give me my boy Malibu Goff for the win, man. Um in this, in through this playoff run, he is completing over seventy five percent of his passes. Brock Purdy, like I said, this last game he didn't play that well, and it was mostly because it was on him. He only completed fifty nine percent of his passes, but even though he was only sacked one time, but um, he's he's capable of, of making mistakes, man. And like Spinny said it perfect, Golf at this point is just better at reading the defense. He's mm-hmm. a veteran, like you said, he's been there before. He understands the moment. It's gonna be tough, but I feel like I would prefer Jared Goff uh, in this test. Um, especially if, if Debo is not going to play or if he's going to be limited, then, like you said, that's a good chunk of their offense right there. And so Silent in the Woodward Sports Chat says, Goff can deliver on a team that isn't littered with all pros and pro bowlers. Uh, what, how dare you now? disrespect our team, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You are disrespecting uh, Amra, he's, he's disrespecting Sam Laporta. All pros and pro <laughs> yeah, what are we, yeah. who like are we doing, great, man? What are we and, doing? And Goff might be a better uh, deep passer because I think he led the league in passes of 20 yards or more uh, yeah. this last season. So I look for Goff to be able to push the, the ball down the field better than uh, Brock Purdy. So I think I think Purdy has the better deep ball. But because when I look at the twenty yard like passes, there's always context those situations. We had Mike Payton on a little bit earlier this year. Think about all those like passes, like Sam Laporta was like wide open. Yeah, you know, like, it's game like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. But but it doesn't matter. I think you guys kind of helped me calm because my initial answer to this question was Jared Goff yeah. for every reason that that Spinny said. He's he's got the California cool. He, you know, Malibu's Goff. He, he's, been he's, he's been there. Yeah. He's been there exactly. And I think I'm leaning towards that in this situation just because, as you said, I mean, bring up the four interceptions by Purdy, that is something we haven't seen by Goff this year. And, and as I said earlier, you know, mentioning like uh, just like what we need to do to win and, and Goff getting blitzed, he knows this offense like the back of his hand. Yeah. He, he is more in tune with what we got going on. He literally, as much as like I credit Ben Johnson for being like the, the catalyst of it all, he also was there to help him install it. Yeah. So I, I think Goff is going to be definitely the, the more comfortable guy in this situation. Although I think, you know, if you're looking at physical attributes – I think I start to lean towards Brock Purdy in that situation. Obviously, he's a little bit more mobile. I, me personally, I think obviously he's got to throw on the run. And, and I'm not saying that Goff can't throw on the run. It's just not a consistent you see out of him. Like when a play breaks down, we've seen Brock Purdy, you know, yeah. bootleg out of there and just throw it to like a Debo or Ayuk down the field. That's just not in Goff's repertoire. Mm-hmm. But it, it's okay because we have that, that elite offensive line. Now, Jonah Jackson absent in that situation, but I think I'm still taking Goff in the experience in this matchup. Yeah. Chris, do you want to speak on this one? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm taking golf. I, I think I think for everything you guys said, I think that he's definitely he's definitely the more experienced, the more seasoned. Um, he's comfortable in this offense, and I think that you know he's shown. I want to say a better ability to handle in adversity than 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 Purdy That's has true. so far. Like when I look at when I look at those drives that he's made in the playoffs so far and late in the regular season, like golf has made some drives. Fire. Where it's like you have to make this drive. And he's and he's done that. So I, I trust I trust Goff, and I think that I think that he is the slightly better quarterback in this matchup. But I think that will be the key. I think whichever yeah. quarterback of these two equally talented quarterbacks, whichever one has the better one, is probably the team that's going to win. And yeah. I know that's a simple breakdown, but I feel like when when these teams are this close, something like that can be the difference, and probably will be the difference in this game. 
Yeah, and uh, much to what Chris said, uh, Goff has only had two bad plays this whole playoff run. It was the the fumble in the in the Rams game that thankfully wasn't a fumble. I don't even remember that. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. You must have wasted. I, yeah, I must have been. Yeah, yeah it was it was it was horrendous. It was bad. It was bad. Pizza or something. Yeah, yeah. No, it was definitely bad. I don't remember but everything else. That play and then the the end zone uh, pass where he just came up a little short. I think he was trying to hit a mine ride and it could have got picked off by Jamal Dean. But yeah. besides those two plays. He's been flawless this whole playoff run. So, yeah. yeah, definitely I feel like he's handling adversity better. If he makes a bad play, he erases it. He, he you know, comes back and, and he delivers. He's hot. He's hot. He's yeah. been, these past four weeks, he's been playing arguably his best ball all year. So, you, you got the hot guy out there playing, oh, yeah. playing well. He's hot. He's hot. His wife's hot, too. I mean, he does look like uh, – who's an actor he looks like? Ryan Gosling. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, Purdy, he came off of a uh, – a tough game. It wasn't a great game that he played yeah. against the Packers, but he did drive him down the field, and they got the touchdown when it mattered, to win it. Yeah. Uh, he is coming off of a bye week, so mm-hmm. that might have been a little rust. We'll see now that he had that playoff game. Well, that rain, bro. It that rain really better. affected yeah. them. The rain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, having trouble with the glove. On defense, too. Like, I was watching – because I watched it back last night. couldn't sleep. And uh, as much as I was like, oh, yeah, like this defense is acceptable. I'm talking about the 49ers defense. I saw a lot of slips, you know, due to the, yeah. the rain. I'm like, damn, well, I don't know if we're going to have that advantage. Yeah. You know, you know, probably not. Secondary but. guys are slipping around, falling on routes. But it is what it is. But I'm, I'm still taking golf, still taking the experience. Uh, I'm just taking, like, his overall, like, where he is right now as, as a pro. It's like uh, – this is the most confident he's ever been. In this it, it absolutely yeah. is, man. You, you could just you could just hear it in his voice, the way he speaks to the media. It's all just it's a low, monotone delivery. Not that he's always kind of like been that way, but it's just like I don't know, man. There's a little bit of dog in him this time. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, it, it, as he said yesterday in the clip that we had, you know, we expected to win those first two games, and we expected to be in this game, and now here we are. And, and I agree with that too. Like the first two games, the first two teams we beat, they're on some like happy to be here bullshit. Yeah, like, the yeah. Rams are supposed to be that you know top ten of, of the lottery, and actually so were the Buccaneers. Now we got a big one ahead of us, and, and it feels like they've known that and they've been prepared for this one. Where the 49ers, I was listening to, uh, we mentioned we, we played it today actually. Um, George Kittle on the Pat McAfee show, they mm-hmm. haven't dove in any Lions tape until yeah. I believe it was Monday and or today, so or tomorrow, I should say, because you know, Tuesdays are off days. So right. I think there is an upper hand advantage, and I think golf feels that confidence, and that's why you hear him speaking that way. Yeah, that's but, fair, that's fair, man. It's like you said, you've got the confident quarterback. You've got the hot quarterback. He, I would say he's more comfortable in this system than Brock Purdy is in San Francisco. I would yeah. say Goff is more more comfortable with the pieces around him than Brock Purdy is in San Francisco. So, Amen. Give me give me Goff. Give me Goff. Give me Goff. Goff across the board? Oh, yes, yeah. Sir. Clean sweep. Hey, I'm not going to bring and it And they up. said y'all didn't like Goff. Come on now. I'm only kept the real, man. I'm only kept the real. <laughs>